Hello there! My name's Brandon and I make pictures out of tiny squares. And today I'm going to attempt to make my own original character inspired by the sprite work of Shovel Knight, which is an action platformer series first released in 2014, and featuring gameplay and graphics that evoke the feeling of old NES games. On the NES, the individual tiles that make up sprites were 8x8 or 8x16 pixels and limited to only three colors each. But the tiles could be layered and combined to generate a character sprite of a higher overall color count. The Shovel Knight sprite plays off this high end of the NES fidelity, with a sprite composed of five colors and a footprint of about 32x32 32 32 pixels in his neutral stance. So these are the main parameters I decided to keep in mind while beginning to design my own Shovel Knight inspired character sprite. To begin, I sized out a height of 32 pixels, just to make sure I stay on track with a similar character sizing. Since Shovel Knight uses the T-shaped Boba Fett style helmet opening, I wanted to do something a little different for my knight, and I went with more of a slotted visor kind of look. I started drawing the head about halfway down here, because my idea is to make a short character with a tall lance, uh, somebody that's like the famous Sir Lancelot, but little, uh, just so I can name them Sir Lancelil. Continuing on here, I'm just trying to find the armor design and other details by using black line work at first. And I've actually got the line work of the Shovel Knight sprite there, just to understand a little better how it's constructed. One of my favorite things about that design is the way the legs taper almost to a really small point. Uh, I think there's just a really great distribution of area and an appeal to the design to have the helmet and the upper body take up most of the visual weight like that. And if you've been wondering why I've got the small piece of the map from Super Mario 3 in the corner there, it's because I plan to use it as a color palette for Lancelil. Due to the limited color palette of the NES, uh, you sometimes get to see some really great color combos in those games. And one that I've always loved is the green, blue, and tan combo of those little trees or hills from that world map. And I thought that combo would be neat to see as armor coloring for this character. I also brought in the orange from that map to use as the fifth color in my design, and it helps give the lance a little bit more of a pop of color against the already vibrant coloring of the armor. To finish the design, I styled the lance as a drill, uh, which I think fits right in with the shovel and dig motif of Shovel Knight. And I think it also kind of just pulled the whole idea of the character together for me. Okay, from here I thought I'd explore a couple basic animations to bring the character to life a little bit. So I figured a good place to start with that was with a simple run cycle. And I'm structuring this as a four frame run cycle, which is composed of only three unique frames, uh, just like the one used for Mega Man on the NES. So there's going to be a left step and a right step, and then a single transition frame between them that's used both times. I like the efficiency of creating only three unique frames to do this, and it also feels appropriate for this sprite size. The head moves down by one pixel for each step frame, and stays up during the transition frame, that way you get that basic head bob with every step. After getting the basic footing down, I brought the lance back in and positioned it in line with his hand and made sure to bring it up by a few pixels on the step where that hand is forward, just to add some additional bobbing into the run cycle. The other animation I'm trying here is basic attack, uh, because I wanted to show the drill lance spinning, just to better communicate what this weapon is actually capable of. After repositioning the sprite into sort of a lunge stance, the actual spin only required two unique frames. I took that basic lance framework and added a few vertical lines in different spots, so when it flicks back and forth between those two variants, you kind of get the illusion of it spinning in place. The final bit of pixeling here is a small character portrait. The Shovel Knight portrait, just like with a lot of NES portraits, occupies a space of 32 by 32 pixels, and so that's the sizing I've adopted also. I started by painting in a basic silhouette of the character using my blue shade color, and then layered in lighter colors on top of that to build up the rendering and reflections. And I know I say this a lot, but I like having character portraits alongside the sprite. Even relatively small portraits like this can provide just a more detailed look at the character design. And in the case of the Shovel Knight portrait, it's also neat to see parts where certain colors get repurposed. Like the way that the blue is used as a shadowy outline for the horns of the helmet. Alright, so I went ahead and organized all this work into a character sheet, so let's go ahead and take a look at my Shovel Knight inspired character, Sir Lancelil.
All right, so for the finalized portrait here, I had a small amount of room that I used to sneak in a bit of the drill lance there. I figured it was an important part of the characterization, so I wanted to have it in the portrait as well. And I just wanted to point out too that with the lance animation, I've added a single frame in there where he just pulls it back a little bit, and it kind of gives like a small amount of wind up into that main action. By the way, shout out to Charles for suggesting this video idea. Uh, I'd had it in mind before, but just hearing it again recently kind of gave me that final push to go ahead with it and it was a lot of fun to put together. So if anyone's got requests for other character sprite inspirations, feel free to leave those down in the comments and I'll see what I can do in future videos. But otherwise, thank you for watching and take care and keep it square.